everybody, welcome back to my studio. I'm Nettie Kay. We are on part two of our beautiful, luxurious um, still life. I look at this and I think, you know, that's pretty artsy. We could just hang that on the wall. But now we're gonna add the beautiful color to it. Uh, now down here I have dioxazine purple, uh, quinacridone violet, I have ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, some sap green, uh, some various yellows, including a lemon yellow, a cadmium yellow light, a permanent orange, and some um, yellow ochre, and a bunch of white. Okay, I've mixed a few little things because I did a study ahead of time to see how these colors were gonna work out. And so I took a masonite board, which are wonderful to paint on. I half wish this was a masonite board. Uh, and I made a study on a panel. Can you see that's a little bit shiny? And so that I checked out how the colors were gonna read. And uh, of course, you know, I didn't take it all the way up to the full level, but this is a little bit about what we're shooting for. And so now I'm going to make that one even better. Here we go. So I've got a few brushes here. Um, I'm going to start out. I might even start out uh, with this time with a palette knife just to get some paint going on here. And we're going to be taking some uh, ultramarine blue. I'm going to put that over into the dark side of the jar. And I'm also going to add a little bit of quinacridone violet like that. And so it's going to become a very dark violet. I'm just laying that on there. And then I'm going to add some white to this side over here. This is a very strange way of, of starting it. Uh, but also I wanted to make mention that I have a jar with a little bit of medium in it. This is Neo Megil, that gel. You can use liquid. You can use whatever you like. But once we get this first part going, here's a little bit of that quinacridone violet. Let's see how dark that is. Really, really dark, really dark. Now I know that jar is not, or that big huge vase is not that dark, but uh, we're gonna start it at this level and then we're gonna move it uh, around a little bit as we go. Okay, here's my big brush. And I'm gonna put my medium on it begin by moving this paint around just a little bit and I don't want to beat it to death I want it to be nice and loose and I'm going to trust myself that my drawing is correct I hope it is I hope it is if it isn't uh, we're in big trouble so uh, anyway here we go I'm going to come in with a little bit of that white right next to it and what I'm doing really is I'm not mixing up colors ahead of time on the palette I am actually uh, mixing up, I gotta get this palette a little bit closer to me. Um, I'm actually mixing on, <laughs> this is a little unconventional. I'm mixing on the painting itself. I'm not messing around down here and mixing different colors, no. I'm actually just going to chunk it up and um, mix the colors as I put it onto the canvas. For instance, okay, here's a little bit of white and then I put it in here as this paint is really quite thick right there and I can take that and move it around move it around my vase like this and I'm going to make this considerably lighter everybody but I want this to go into the dark to where it almost disappears and becomes quite mysterious all right so now I'm going to grab a lot more of this uh, this white and just the blue and it doesn't mean I'm not going to mix colors a little bit on my palette, no, but I'm going to be doing a, uh, a lot of that on here. This has got a weird pattern on it. It's not really, you know, like one of the Chinese vases. It's, it's with the, you know, fancy pagodas and that sort of thing. It's actually a um, uh, kind of a really loose, 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 loose um, um, bit of a... Um, design rather than a printed on pattern. It's just very, very, very loose. Okay, I gotta figure out how to make this not quite so purple. And then I've got a lemon right here, so I'm gonna end up 
I'm realizing that I have quite a bit of purple on here and now I'm kind of frustrated with it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to take some of this out. There. All right. That's better. When you have too much of a color, then you really have to watch out. So then you just wipe it down and then you can go back in and start over a little bit with your, your actual color you want. All right, here's that light blue. Yeah. And we'll work that back in. One thing I don't want is a bunch of sharp edges. We are going to avoid that like the plague. Okay. Here's the light, light blue. And we'll just keep moving around. And I'm grabbing some of that white that I threw on there and start working that back in that kind of interesting, interesting design. Like this around where that, that lemon is going to be. Move it around, move it around. There, that's, that's closer to the color that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to take that same blue a little less purple, a little more blue. And I'm going to come in over here and take this pot and create this little bit of a shadow color on that side. And I'm going to uh, work the white part of this around as we go um, a little bit later. But meanwhile, I'll put just a little bit of a lighter color here. Hope you can see that. Yes, you can. And we'll go like this and just keep it nice and nice and fluffy. Yeah. Now, one, one thing that I am learning, all right, I couldn't remember which canvas I bought for my classroom the other day. And so, uh, which is not, not stretch canvas, but the uh, rolled canvas. And so I bought a roll of canvas that's about six feet high, 72 inches. And I uh, got that and I, um, oh my goodness, uh, I've been using a little bit of it lately and I'm realizing that the texture of it isn't my favorite. So it's just going to end up in a lot of different things. It, it's just hard to paint on. I like painting on something that's really, really smooth. And so this one has got a little more tooth, which is going to be great for our, our kind of wild and crazy stuff. Okay, so there we have the two jars, dark on that one side, middle tone in the middle, and light on the other. And the light's coming from here. So now you can see that's really kind of... Um, really light on on that side compared to the dark but I'm going to make it even more so so that this will really show up and I'm throwing just a little bit of this blue into the shadow areas of the cloth a little bit maybe a little bit up into our flower area just willy-nilly making sure that I'm moving around a lot and now I'm going to put this brush away because I don't want it to contaminate the rest and then I'm going to grab a slightly smaller one. This is a half an inch. Oh, maybe they're about the same size. I'm not exactly sure. And then over here, I'm going to uh, keep working it. I'm going I'm to jump down here to these lemons is what I'm going to do. And with a lemon, uh, I'm going to start out with a cadmium yellow light on this one right here. And often you'll start with the, uh, with the, the darkest dark and move up on on these things. But this time I think I'm just, because I've got a lot of the tonal values already kind of sorted out, I'm going to just go ahead and add that lemon yellow there and I'm going to put in a slight amount of orange into that, that cadmium yellow, sorry, cadmium yellow there. That's a little bit darker and so I'm going to add that into the one that's behind because it's a little bit darker. And then I'm going to throw in just a little tiny bit down here. Then I'm going to go in and add even more of the orange to, um, let's see, did I decide I was going to do one down here? I'm going to add 
You know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to the bottom of a few of these, like down here, like that. Still has a little bit of yellow on it. This is really, really dark. Well, it's nighttime right now, so everything looks a little bit dark in my my reference, but I want to make this just a, uh, quite a bit darker here. So, but, but as I'm looking at it, I'm also seeing, so I'm going to add some of my uh, kind of a dark brownish color right here, and I'm going to put that in because the back of that lemon is actually relatively dark in comparison to the lemon behind it. It's picking up some light, and so I'm going to figure out what's happening with that. There we go. Now it's dark, and it comes around like this, and then it has a little bit of a roundishness to it. This is nice. This is really nice. Sometimes lemons can get really muddy. Anybody else out there figured that one out? So you have to make sure you don't just muddy up the colors. You lay it down and don't pick at it. You know, as I'm saying, don't don't spend more than 30 seconds in one spot before you move. Otherwise, you will make mud. I guarantee. I guarantee. Okay. So now I'm gonna. I was gonna put this lemon over here, and I'm still kind of debating on it because I just like this yellow color so much. I think it's it's quite wonderful. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that dark green and uh, sap green and add it down into the bottom as it turns away so that it it becomes this one obviously is getting uh, interesting it's kind of sticking out there like that and then on the the base I'm just throwing in a little bit of of whatever on my brush and now I'm going to add some red this is that quinacridone violet which is a reddish purple into the shadow and it really looks nice. I like that a lot. Okay, and then down here, I have a smaller little shadow that goes like that, and it's going kind of into that blue and tying it together. Meanwhile, meanwhile, let's go into, what color is this? Oh, this is the dark dioxazine purple, and I'm going to add what's called a parting line. Parting, not party line, but parting line right here. And then I'll drag it out so that it separates the, uh, the the lemon from the table a little bit. And I'll mess around with that a little bit more. And I'm going to take that same thing and the same purple and, and throw that in to a couple of those little parting lines right there, right into the inside of that. And I'm just playing around going, where else can I use that? Oh, yeah, this is fun. Uh, let's see. I might add just a little bit before we go into our leaves and a few things like that. So it's really, really, really nice. I like it. So now we do have quite a bit of our shadow color in these, uh, these beautiful lemons going. Now over here, I'm going to actually lighten this up just a little bit. We're going to add some of the yellow ochre. I'm going to put the yellow ochre because my background is made out of uh, the same material that paper bags are made out of. Isn't that fun? And I'm going to be doing a video on that background, as I just said. Um, we're going to be doing a video for Patreon to show you how I made that in uh, the next little while. So as soon as I get around to it. Okay, so I've got a little bit up here. Now I'm grabbing that dioxazine purple and I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to make that even darker, and I'm going to grab a little bit of my orange into the dioxazine purple. And the value, meaning dark metal tone light, I'm going to try to match this up a little bit to the pot. I don't want, uh, this time around, I want to do almost what's called a lost edge, everybody. Well, what in the world's a lost edge? That means where you can... Uh, I can take this pot and just make that edge of that pot disappear into the background by using virtually the same uh, the same tonal value in the background, and it gives it more of a sense of mystery. So now I'm going to come in with that dark blue again and kind of reestablish it just a little bit, but not too much. Now I'll be able to see the edge of my pot down here 
on this part, but not right here so much. It's just going to kind of dissolve into the background. And that's what gives it that mystery feel to it. So let's kind of take that little shadow-ish color and put that, or tonal value, and put that down into this pot. Because I don't want this part of the pot to jump right out. I'm looking for some other things. This is where it's going to jump out, is going to be the flowers right there. So that's, that's how we do that. And then I'm going to take um, a dry brush at this stage, and I'm going to also, I've got to bring a little bit of that blue down to the, um, the edge of the, um, the lemons, okay? And then I don't, because a lemon is a round object, I don't want it sharp on the edge. So I'm going to take a clean brush, and I'm going to take that yellow and just fuzz it by, by giving it a little bit of a back and forth motion. I'm not picking that brush up at all. I'm just making it fuzzy by just laying that brush down on there and then fuzzing it into what's behind it. And you have to have something behind it in order for it to work, everybody. So don't forget. This takes a little bit of doing, but it makes a whole lot of difference on anything that you're painting that is round, okay, which is most of everything in life as far as I'm concerned. All right, now I'm going to take a little bit of white with on my brush, on that little brush, and I'm going to come in and I'm seeing a slight highlight. I take a little bit of white right here and I'm going to put in some white right in here lighten that up just where I think the light is going to hit that lemon right like that. Right now it looks a little bit like a kumquat or an apple, but I'm not sure we'll fix that because it's got a, a little thing that sticks out. So I'm going to pull that up and then we'll make that little bump come out right there. I'll, I'll keep working that. I'm going to come over here with that color. That's what I need right there. And I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to also take a little bit of that white and mix it into make it nice and thick and create a sense of that light coming out on top of that lemon. You can see that. Isn't that just scrumptious? Yeah. Okay, so underneath this, then I'm going to take a little bit of green. This is the sap green on my brush, and I'm going to uh, create a sense of that, that little bump that sticks out at the bottom of, the, of this thing. I've got to get it a little bit darker. Okay, we'll make it a little darker underneath so that it uh, stands out a little bit. There, like that. And I'll make it a little bit darker on the top there so that it comes out. Feels a little distorted. There we go. There's that shadow color. I've added a little bit of blue uh, and green to my brush into that existing orange right there and then darkening it up where I see that on the lemon. Let's get this part a little bit darker and a little more green as well. And then I'll pull this down. Okay, and the main thing is don't mess around too much. I'm, I'm going to say that so many times. This up here is kind of interesting in that it's kind of dark as it comes around like that so that the light part is really uh, becomes more uh, Really, a highlight is not a great big area of white. It's just an area. This is just going to, now I'm going to move this. It's an area where is that's really small that is the lightest part on the object, is the highlight right there. So now I'm just thinking about the form of this, and I'm taking the brush strokes and moving them in the direction into the paint that's already on there, everybody. I'm not really... You know, I'm, I'm painting into paint right now. I love that concept. You're not painting until you're painting into paint, which means you need paint on the canvas before you have anything to move around. And so you're moving paint around like this, and I'm doing the same thing over here, taking that paint, and I'm just shoving around the paint. I'm adding more paint to it from the palette, but I'm also using the paint that's already on the canvas. Yay, that's right. I love this. This is so yummy. Yay. Isn't this fun? Now I don't feel like doing anything else. Oh well. Okay. Well now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to grab some a lot of white and I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre 
and I'm going to take a, a huge amount of white, and I'm going to I'm going to create this uh, sense of light by coming alongside the uh, the jar right here, and I'm I'm making a nice light. It's almost a light tan. I'm I'm not putting it straight white because white has no personality of its own. It just doesn't. I know a lot of you guys think, oh, well, white is a color. No, it just it it helps it to be lighter, but it does not give it any flavor. Okay, you want to flavor your white. You know, even vanilla ice cream has vanilla in it. It's not just milk, and that's where I'm going with that. So now I'm going to add um, into this this light tan. Then I'm going to add a little bit more white to it, and I'm going to use this and mix it on the painting. It, that's a little unconventional, I know, but uh, it's it works for me. And then I'm going to come up here like this, and I'm going to create this little kind of a jump over here. And this is going to be a little bit lighter here as well. Okay, well, uh, I need a bigger brush probably for this. So the next thing is going to be taking a little bit of that uh, sap green, and I'm going to bring this into uh, the jar shape just a little bit there so that I can work it into that background color. And I'll, I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit more. I need to. I do need it to be a, quite a bit lighter because it's, it's in that zone. So I'm going to add tons of white. Now I'll have lots to work with on my palette. And then right behind here, is a streak of that really warm light color right there. And it's just kind of coming through a little bit the background of this. And then I'll do the same thing down here on this part down here. So I've got that. I'm going to add some medium so it'll move around a little bit. This canvas actually is working fairly well now that I have a layer of paint on it. Uh, when we first started it, uh, it was not, not very good. And I just thought, oh, no, no, no. And it felt like, you know when you get something and it feels like it's sinking in uh, automatically? Um, well, here's a thought. Make sure that when you do it, uh, put in an extra layer of, of uh, gesso, which I normally do, everybody. Um, but this time I was in a hurry and I just stuck it on there. And so now I've got that. This is the back of the cloth right here, and I've got another part of the cloth that kind of comes down like this, and that kind of shoots through. I'm going to just fuzz that into what's underneath there a little bit, and it shoots through this glass right here. So what's the bright part in the glass? Oh, right here. Okay. How do you make it look like it's transparent? Well, when the light's coming from over here, it comes out and it shoots out the side of the glass right here. So anything that's behind is going to jump up and the light will come out. I've got some sort of piece of paint on my brush. That always bugs me a little bit. Um, it comes out right here. And then I've got some other shapes in there that I want to, to establish. So I'm going to add those in as well. Get a little bit of medium on my brush. And we're going to put in a little bit of this, that, and the other thing. And then, oh, there's a tiny weirdo little piece. Now you can see it already looks as though there's some transparency in the glass. Isn't this beautiful? Up here in the top part of the glass where this, uh, that rag goes through, all right? Remember what you're, you're doing. You're trying to create what's behind the glass. And it kind of comes in like this, and I'm really looking at it. And so I'm putting that, and then there's some little swirly things that go like that. And I think there's a, yeah, there's a little thing right here. I'm trying to think what this kind of glass is. Oh, it's a mason that has a bit of a squaring off. So I'm going to put a little tag of waterline right like this, like that, and hopefully I'll have that all figured out. Okay, and at the bottom, at the bottom, it looks like it's reflecting a little bit of that green. So I'm going to put that mint green color at the bottom and some darker green, just a slightly darker right there. 
Now, remember that glass, everyone, glass is uh, thick on the side, so it's going to have kind of a, a little bit of a, that kind of a thing going on. And then I'm going to make sure that it kind of continues down a little bit. Is it darker? Is it lighter? I'm always asking myself that. The background color is that tan color, and so I'm going to add some of that into the background in the jar just a little bit. I'm not trying to make this look super realistic, but I do want it to look plausible or believable. That's really, really important. You don't want to make it, you know, look like nobody knows what it is. But, uh, you know, is this a, a, a believable item that we're looking at or, or image that we're looking at? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, now, while I'm going to set that brush down and I'm going to come back in here again, I just want to, before, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to eliminate this area between the side of the jar and the background again. And then I'm going to work this part over here just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to come up with that, the um, lovely paper bag color, the burnt, actually yellow ochre is what I've got on my brush, or gold ochre, oh, gold ochre, that's hard to say, gold ochre, and I'm going to put that in there. So we're looking for contrast on the areas that we want to jump forward. Light against dark, dark against light. And so when I get to this part right up here with the flowers, I want to make sure that I have a nice contrast both in color and in tonal value. So my flowers are kind of a white, they've got a little white lavender, white yellow, white blue, and the background is in this neutral paper bag color, which is in shadow and doing a bunch of other things. So, okay, so let's see right here. I'm going to do the same thing, add a little more medium. I hope it's not too shiny. Are you getting it? I'm getting a shine on that. And I'm going to add that right there, that yellow ochre, and kind of scumble that around and make sure it's nice and soft. I'm going to soften this up right here. I don't want I want it to be light, but I don't want it to have a sharp edge as though it's a piece of paper jutting up in the middle of that. So now I'm going to take some of this and uh, we're going to bring that fabric down just a little bit so it doesn't look like a hose. It has to work as a piece of fabric. And I might, uh, I might just throw in this fabric is going to come out like that, and it might come out a little bit on that side. I can see it for sure. Whether I want it there, that's up to me. So I'm going to just add just a little bit of an indication of that fabric as it comes out. It comes over there. A little challenge. There we go. And then right here, I'm going to throw in some of that shadowy color which is bluish and brown and then that comes out into that little plane right there oh my goodness sakes all right there we go that's a fun start isn't it okay i think i lost a little bit of a round part of my vase i don't want it in the big dent in it there we go okay now uh, i'm going to come back in here and we're going to add some greenery inside that vase. So I'm going to take that sap green as close to, uh, let's see, sap green. Let's test it out and see what that green. Yeah, that's beautiful. Some straight sap green. I don't use a lot of sap green but um, by itself. But I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to put that in the jar as though it is the foliage, and I'm not uh, fussing around with, with the foliage too much. I'm just kind of making it nice and green, and then I'm going to add it down into the jar down here. I just jumped it right outside of the jar, or maybe that was always there. Oh, maybe. Okay, and here's a little 
green stem. I'm going to add a little green stem coming down this way. And uh, let's see, a couple of them coming in kind of like that and maybe across like this. That's neat. Next thing I want to do is grab some of that white and I want to figure out where some of this really light stuff goes. And so I'm going to find where the highlight goes there. I want to find the highlight on the back of the jar there. I want to come up here. I'm just going to throw, I know we're not at this point yet, but this is what I'm doing. Uh, most of the time I will really work the whole piece up for a long period of time, but this is a bit of a demonstration. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take, let's see, I've got the top of the jar is where that light hits right there. And I'm just taking as much paint as I need right now. And then this, I, this is actually a green flower and I've decided I'm not going to do it in green. I'm going to do it white. It just doesn't make sense that that's a green flower like that. Whoops. And then I'm going to put in just a little bit there, a little bit there. Yeah. Playing around a little. Okay, and then I'm going to come back in with that light, uh, really, really light color right next to the pot. And we're going to put that in so that it doesn't look turquoise. And I will mess around with this with the brush. I'm just trying to find the shape of that a little bit. There we go. Come back in again with my a different brush. Yeah, that's good. That'll hold it. And I'm going to put that nice light color. This is uh, the yellow ochre with white. It looks like it's got a little purple in it. And I'm going to take that and bring it to the front like that. I like that little pot. I've been wanting to paint this little pot again for a long time. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Get there. Now I'm going to come around here and say, okay, this is white here. Take my white. This is a very stiff white. I'm just using it kind of like a little palette right there. And that comes over here. So it's, I'm, a, I'm remembering that this is the fabric. This is the fabric. The fabric then comes out the side of the jar right there. And then that comes down like that. Ooh, that's nice. And again, this is round. So I'm going to take my brush and kind of go, ooh, scumble, scumble, soften it up. You can use a Q-tip. You can use a a brush, but uh, right now that seems to be working with the little brush. That's awesome. Push that out. Good. And I'm going to do another round of this light right here. It's really important that that's lighter than it is. So there we go there. And a little bit more light right there. I don't want to pick at it. Remember, we just keep moving. This right here needs to be a little bit more light. And then it comes up like that. It still looks a little bit too yellow, so grab a little more white and bring it up. And then I'll drag this down just a little bit and pull that out so it looks proper. What is this right here? Um, That's the jar. Oh, I see. That's really dark. I've got a lighten that up a little bit and all of a sudden looks like a big blue blob in the middle. Sometimes you do something and you can't remember why you did it. It's what happens when you get to be my age. And so this actually is connected to that and kind of a little bit of a rolled over fabric. There we go. So I just made it a little dark next to that and then make it come up. Okay, yeah, that's starting to come together. Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, I'm going to also, let's, let's take this and smash that around a little bit. I've got the edge of that pot there. 
there's some uh, design that's happening. And so I'm just taking that blob of white that I just put on there and start kind of thinking about what the design is on here. I don't know what this design is. I've never seen one quite like it before. Kind of like that. I may not even keep that design. I might just do my own little thing because I'm not crazy about the design. I love the color of it, but I'm not crazy about the design. Now I'm going to take what's on my brush and make that a little bit lighter up there so that the handle has some uh, dark middle tone and light. Good. There. Okay. And then this part of the lid will have will be a little lighter because it's going to be in the light. That's in the dark. This is in the light. This is in the light. I'm going to lighten that up even more. Of course, at one point, you can actually let it dry and then come back in with the design. I, I like doing that sometimes. If I'm doing a really picky piece, all right, if it's, if it's loose, I don't really want to come back in and do the design. I'd rather like to do, do it all at one time rather than, uh, than, you know, but it's safer. Okay, I'll just say that. It's much safer when you let it dry because then you can always wipe it back off if you make a mistake and you get right back down to where you were. I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to uh, let this sit for a minute and then we'll break it down into one more lesson and we'll finish up all of the fine finishing touches, including doing the flowers in the still life. Okay, so uh, it's getting really dark here in the studio and I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing. Ooh, yeah, it is a little bit dark, but I do like this. So uh, yeah, let me take a look at it and then I will come back for part three. Yes, won't that be fun? Hope you hang in there with me. And don't forget, in the next little while, after I finish this one, we're going to be doing a really wild and crazy painting of my little friend right here. Yeah. Sugar. That's what her name is. Sugar. Okay. There's a lot of them around here right now. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends about my channel and subscribe. I, you know, I know you hear this all the time on YouTube. But it's really, really important. And don't forget to watch the videos all the way to the end because we need to get our numbers. This is my big challenge. I'm trying to get my hourly uh, watch time up to 4,000 because um, that way I'll get paid for what I do. Won't that be nice? Not very much, but something. Okay, so make sure you watch all the videos from the front to the end. And I'll give you a pat on the head and a big air hug. Yeah. Okay. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.